different in the sense that it's definitely more, I want, originally I would say blues based, but now the solo realm is definitely embracing more of that. Uh, with Alter Bridge, there's not a lot of, you know, of a blues element. Um, so, you know, I still do what I do from an inflection standpoint. You know, I learned to listen, I, I learned to sing basically by listening to Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye uh, in conjunction with the obvious the rock guys, you know, Freddie and Robert Plant and whatnot. And, and, and so, you know, you, you kind of have what you do and it's hard to, uh, and I don't want to totally break free from that. This is who I am. But when you take that approach and you put it in these different environments, it'll, I think it accentuates certain things. And so in this particular realm, um, I feel like a lot of it's from the hip. There's like a real swagger to the music. And so you have to, I think, manifest that to a point in the, in the way you perform as a singer. And uh, so it's fun. I like that. I think the, the other two projects tend to be more, um, more like journal entries. And with this, I tend to tell stories a little more. Uh, like we have a song off the, one of the first records, Anastasia, you know, that's about a guy on the run from the law. And I'm, I've, never, I've never been that guy. I know nothing about that. But, but you, you, you try and tell a story. Um, but there are songs on the new record that um, were definitely inspired by situations that I've seen. Um, there's a song called Fall Back to Earth, which you see it time and time again, where people try to, um, you know, the, the, they, they, they gain the world and then they lose themselves. You know, and that's something I've seen being in the entertainment industry. I had a, I had a professor when I went to music school who, who brought that up. And that was like, that was an important day for me where I was like, I wrote that down, <laughs> you know, never be that guy. But I'm sure I've, I've come close. You know, you try and be something that you're not. And, and so, so with that said, though I'm kind of telling a story in that song with uh, Fall Back to Earth, though it's, it's a story, they, this is subject matter that I understand. And I would prefer when I write to have something that I can, if I'm conveying it, I know what I'm talking about. You know, because otherwise I feel like people know. They're like, he's in the, he's, he doesn't have a clue what he's singing about here. And then I can't. I can't be genuine, and that's a big part of the way that I like to sing, is to have it come from here. We embrace technology, which is great. I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine how hard it would be to live in different parts of the country or different parts of the world and, and, and write records, but we, because of technology, we can get, um, it's like being in the room together. So yeah, Slash would send a demo, and then I generally, I try to work, I used to be one of these guys who would <clears throat> overthink and obsess. And, and as the years go on, I've learned to really trust my, my instincts right out of the gate. So I'll press play, I'll be in my studio, and usually the first melody I hear is, is what I'll roll with and then start building the lyric from there. Um, occasionally he'll, he would send a demo and I think, well, maybe there, this could be we need like more of a chorus section. So I would take it and put it in logic and you know, chop it, leave like 16 bars or eight bars or whatever, and then put a really bad drum part to it and play some guitar and then put a, like a new little section. And there's just a handful of songs on this record. I think um, uh, Call, the, Call Off the Dogs and, and uh, Rivers Rising. It was, that was one of those things where I was like, oh, this riff is killing. Like I remember when I heard Rivers Rising, right out of the gate. My wife was, we were in the, in kind of our family room area and, and I put it in and she's like, this is killer. I'm like, yeah, I love this. And I, I knew that was gonna be an important track. So, um, so yeah, I just put a, put, put a little chorus section to it and then put a melody there and then sent it right back to him. Just before it went, get too deep. Like, is this cool? Are you cool if we put this in here? And he, the, the beauty with working with Slash and I think everybody in the band will um, chime in on this is that he's not, he's not precious with the ideas. He's very open to whatever, as long as it's good for the song. And that, that's awesome, especially considering, I mean, how many records he sold, the things that he's done. You know, he could just be like, nope, this is, <laughs> this is my thing. I'm gonna do it the way I want. And he's like, no, that's cool, whatever, whatever works. 
And if it, and if it doesn't work, then he'll he'll be you know he'll be honest, and that's great. I would prefer that than to like you know oh yeah that's great oh it's horrible, but um, yeah so that's kind of how how we do it. But generally speaking, I, ninety percent of the time the demos are like the music is is good to go, and I just put the melody to it and the lyric, and then we're off to the races. Yeah, I'm a melody guy. Like I think it was year, years of listening to Paul McCartney and and Beatles, like it's all about, to me, melody is paramount. And, but it's weird how sometimes with a melody, the lyric will just kind of happen as you're singing it. You'll just be kind of like, call off the dogs. What did I just say? Oh, call, maybe call off, call off the dogs. And then you just, you know, and you just run with it. And then you build a, build a theme from, from there. Um, but once in a while, you'll have a melody that you really like and you just can't find the right phrase that sits with it and that those are those are a real pain in the butt <laughs> it's a lot of um <laughs> a lot of laughing um it's just a lot i think everybody has a real good sense of humor and and todd you know todd, todd and frank like when those two get going it's just like it's the comedy hour so that's great because it kind of breaks the ice um, yeah, I mean, we've been through so many different things around the world. There's just a lot of, there is a tremendous amount of history now. I mean, it's a decade, more than a decade, which is hard to imagine. So you, yeah, you definitely bond through all that. And it is interesting is even if we haven't seen each other in months, you know, I'm trying to remember the longest we've gone without connecting. It's just like riding a bike. You get in a room and it's like, oh yeah, there's my, there's my bro. And, we just kind of pick up where we left off. The first record I ever did live was a it was a fusion record from a long time ago, and it was a full on like jazz odyssey, <laughs> and it was live. It was all like, and I was just playing guitar, so that was the first live record I did. But as a rock band goes, yeah, this is the first one. Uh, I think we were. You, know, you always try to do. You want to do that. You want that live feel, but when it's all said and done, by the time you have all the overdubs and all that. It, turns into a different thing. But this was, this was pretty much a live record, you know, speaking from, from my standpoint. I'd say 80% were just, what you hear was basically the scratch tracks. So it was a, for, for a certain reason, but it was, uh, yeah, so some of the songs were like maybe one or two passes and that was the vocal. Then there were, there were I think two or three songs that, long story, I tracked by myself and on my computer <laughs> because that, that was the only way to get it done. So, uh, so other than that, the rest of the record was, was done live. And the guy, yeah, the guy is definitely, it was fascinating watching how Dave works. He's so fast. Like, it's just like, he gets in there with the tambourine and he, he's a vibe guy. He's, he's about capturing lightning in a bottle. You know, it's, it's about just, I remember actually talking with uh, Jay Buchanan from the Rival Sons because Jay had been, suggesting Dave for, for years. He, he wanted, he brought up using him on the first solo record that I did years ago. I said, Dave's amazing. And I was like, I know, his work sounds great. Um, but, why, but he was right, he's just like, he's a vibe guy. He knows how to, he, look, a good producer, it's not just about the tones and the arrangements, it's about the psychology. It's about making the artist feel con con comfortable. And there would be days, I'm sorry to meander, but, 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 but I guess I have to tell this little story where we're all in the, we're all in the, the room kind of waiting to record, press the red button, you know, and there's, so, there's always that little bit of anxiety as an artist. You're like, you're trying to be, you know, casual and cool, but you know you're about to document something forever. So there's that, that wait. And Dave's just like, hey, let's, let's go on a field trip. Let's just, let's go next door. There's this, let's go see the original studio. To, let's go see Studio B. And, oh, okay. And so, you know, we go over and it's just a great way to, I guess, kind of break the ice. So we did that for 45 minutes and then we go back to the main studio and everybody's just chill and relaxed. And he's like, and he knows that's when you press the red button. Now my, now my guys are ready to go. It's incredible. I mean, I think, you know, Jolene was, was cut there, and I Always Love You, if I'm not mistaken, was cut there. I mean, and then you see the pictures, and it's like, you, oftentimes, I've been in a handful of studios where there's that legacy, and there are those ghosts 
of iconic songs and artists. And there is something, at least to me, that is, it's tangible. You can feel it. It's weird. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know how else to articulate that. But with that said, it also adds a certain, like, you got to up your game. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be going there and be a hack and because some of the greatest of all time have been in that room and you want to do that room justice. I feel really lucky to have Todd as a, not just as a bass player, I mean, we feel lucky to have Todd, as, but, but I feel lucky to have him as a, as a co-vocalist because he's, he's a lead vocalist in his own right. I mean, he's a, he's a great singer. And um, so to ha have somebody who can sing above me, you know, so he can harmonize. He doesn't, a lot of times when you're a tenor, you hope somebody can, like a baritone will come in and be underneath you to kind of fill it out. But with him, he can go, you, 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 ah, and he'll be like, ah. <laughs> it's like, all right. And, and, and it's become such a huge part of the sound. I kind of feel like he's, I've, I've felt like that since the first record we did together. I feel like he's the secret weapon because he's just so talented. And he, and he also, you know, he serves the song. He's, he's, he, there's no ego there at all. So he's just, um, he's a genuinely good soul who's just crazy talented. And so I'm, I'm grateful to ha have him as my, we call ourselves the, what do we call ourselves? The Heverly Brothers or something? <laughs> Some silly he, phrase that he coined. Yeah, he's awesome. There's a song called Fill My World Again, which is, though it's not like a big rock song, um, it has a lot of meaning to me. And um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, seeing if that will translate live because you never know and I hope hopefully it will but yeah it was a song that was once again slash sent the demo of the music and I immediately connected with it I was like oh this is really great this is just like classic slash um, just a really beautiful guitar melody and very memorable and and so once again it was a lyric or uh, I'm sorry, a melody that came pretty quickly. And it was inspired by um, my dog, Mozart. He's a Shih Tzu and he's a little, he's a little brat, but he's, he's, he's essentially you know, our kid, <laughs> uh, my wife and I. And we were, I, I don't know where we were, but we couldn't get home one night. And um, so we have those little camera things and we were supposed to get home, or she, maybe she was supposed to get home, and something happened, and so he was stuck in the house by himself. And there was a massive storm. We get these crazy storms where I live in Spokane now, where like trees fall down and the wind's just gotten nuts. And he, he hates it, he freaks out. So we kept watching him throughout the night, and he was just panicking. He was just freaking out. You know, he, was he was freaking terrified. And so the, the song is basically written from his perspective of like, when are you coming home to save me? And uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, when I, was, when I was tracking it, you can kind of hear my voice break a little bit at one point, and that's like an honest, <laughs> like I, I'm a softy, I'll, I, I'll admit that. Um, I'm the guy, if I'm at a chick flick, I will cry during the movie. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, he's, he, um, he, he, uh, he inspired that track lyrically, and, and so I'm curious how people will connect with it. The, the rest of the Shih Tzus in the world. <laughs> there are some songs, I'm trying to remember, nothing's jumping out at the moment, but where the melody will be so strong on the guitar part, oftentimes you won't have a counter to that. But once in a while, I'll be like, you know what, it ain't broke. I'm not gonna veer away from what's going on in the, at that moment, because it's a great melody, so let's just hang our hat on that and run with it. But uh, he, the thing that's great, is his core progressions, he stays out of the way. Like he, you know, he's a, he's a great guitar player. He's got chops for days, but he understands that there's a time for that. And then there's a time for setting it up so that the vocal melody has uh, room to breathe. 
And, um, and that's something that I've always appreciated about him. It's not like, oh, I'm going to do this super fancy rhythm part and it's going to be really syncopated or it's going to be super, you know, so people can go look at my fancy guitar playing right here. He's like, no, this will be three chords and the truth, <laughs> you know, and therefore you can do your melody and you can have the, the lyric and the narrative do what it needs to do. And, and uh, we'll, we're going to serve the song. And I think that's part of the reason that we've worked together as long as we have is, is we, that's, uh, that's, I think, paramount to both of us is to serve the song. It was crazy because everybody in the organization will tell you that the one guy who was all freaked out, um, and I think everybody was, but I was, you know, I'm, I'm a hypochondriac in the first place. So this whole thing has, you know, been really interesting to navigate. And so strangely enough, I was the first person to get it. And we'd followed all, this pro all these protocols, you know, we, we didn't fly. Um, we basically met, uh, like, I think in Las Vegas, and everybody was tested before they got on the bus to make sure that they're cool. And then we drove the rest of the way, and we got there. And before we went in the studio, everyone's tested. Like, we did everything we thought we could do. And uh, about 24 hours in, I was like, hmm, man, my allergies are starting to flare up what's going on here and then and then it got it was definitely not allergies and so we got a doctor in and but I still didn't I thought maybe it was like the cold or something and, and even the doctor was like oh yeah you're fine you're fine and then like three minutes in he's like he's saying my viral load was just it was it was up there and so yeah you've got COVID and I just couldn't believe it so yeah I called Slash because I wasn't going to go and <laughs> go back in the room with everybody. Um, and I said, hey, I've, I got COVID. Like, we're going to have to, I'm sorry. I've, I don't know how we're going to. And we were all staying in the same house together. So this was a, excuse my French, but this was a total shit show. <laughs> and so, um, so, yeah, we all basically had to quarantine and try and finish a record. And it was... It was interesting. So yeah, I, I was out in this pool house thing. That's where I was sleeping. And that was my, um, that was where I finished the record. So Todd, you know, we would go out and I had logic and uh, like a universal audio interface and got the, the appropriate uh, preamp that Dave thought would work really well for, for, the, for the vocals. And we just uh, finished the vocal out there. And uh, fortunately, because the record was essentially tracked live, you know, five days in, it was pretty much, I mean, the, the bulk of it was done. So by the time it started just rolling through and getting the, those of us that got it, we were pretty much, you know, we had a record. So, but uh, yeah, it was crazy. I, I hope that they hear a, a record that I, you feel this way with any record that 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 is you're just trying to kind of document where you are at that point in life as an artist and do it in an authentic way and hopefully this batch of songs will um, you know resonate and make people happy maybe these have been kind of crazy times so hopefully there'll be some moments on there that'll make someone feel better or maybe it, um, there'll be something that they'll hear and they'll go, hey, you know, I, I can relate to that. And, and, you know, that's all good. And there's that strength in knowing that somebody else feels the same way you do about something. Or maybe it's just as simple as that's a badass riff. <laughs> and I want to turn it up and have a good time and, and get in my Z28. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.